Hey guys, in this tutorial, I wanted to go over camera projection, which is the technique of taking a 2D image and converting it into a 3D image. For this tutorial, we'll be working with this image, but for the image that you have, you want to make sure that it is as high resolution as possible, because if you're moving your camera around the scene, you want as much resolution to work with if you're getting close to textures. The two pieces of software that we'll be using for this tutorial is FSpy and Blender. I already have FSpy open. So to start, you take your preferred image and drag it and drop it into FSpy. Once you open the software, you see all these different parameters. But to keep it simple, what you want to do is you want to take these lines and align them with the lines in the image in order to create a camera solve. And one more important thing that you want to do is whatever image you're working with, you want to make sure that it's undistorted to get the best correct result. So you want to take your image into Lightroom, uh, preferably if you shot the image raw and undistort it there. Taking a look at the left corner, we see that the red lines are the X axis and the green lines are the Y axis. So I want to make this line leading into the tunnel the Y axis and I want to make this line parallel to the camera the X axis. To move the lines, you take them by the point and just click and to get a more precise movement, you can hold down shift as well. And you wanna make sure that it's right at the intersection at the edge. And now we wanna pick lines on the X axis. So I see this line up here that can be used for the X axis. So I'm gonna take it, drag it, put it in that corner there, and take this point and putting it in that corner there. And this next line, I'm gonna take it here and move it here as well. Just a quick note, uh, when you're doing this, you want to pick lines that are furthest away from each other uh, because that allows the program to approximate the camera more uh, accurately. Once we aligned all the lines, you can see that we have this little uh, gizmo over here. And if you move it around, you just want to make sure that uh, it aligns well with the scene. So you could see that it's matching all the edges correctly. So you just want to make sure that that is the case before you export this file. Then you want to take this point and place it somewhere and wherever you place it, that will be the world origin of your Blender scene. So once we're done with that, we go to File, Save As, and you can name it whatever you want. I'll name it Tutorial. And once it's saved, we open up Blender, File, Import, FSpy. I'm going to have FSpy as well as the Blender FSpy plugin in the description below for you to download. Then we want to import the file into Blender. So once we import the file, we have the image as a camera background. It added a camera into the scene with the calibrated correct focal length and camera position, as well as having the world origin where we set it in the software. From here, we want to make a 3D model of our scene. And this method is very forgiving. You do not need to be so exact. So I'm going to start out with adding a plane, scaling it, going into edit mode. You can go into edit mode by pressing tab. Then I just want to align these edges to the wall. When you're modeling, I suggest putting it in wireframe mode so you have an easier time to model and see the background. Uh, I'm going to extrude that up, add a ceiling. Once again, doesn't need to be so exact. Then I'm going to extrude some more back. I want to bevel this to have that beveled, take this, scale it down. So as you can see, I have recreated roughly the geometry of the image in 3D. Not exactly 100%, but it is good enough to sell the effect. So once we have that done, we go into shading tab, create a new texture, uh, delete the principal P BSDF, and take the original image that we are working with and import it into the shading and uh, we take color and connect it into surface and it looks really funky at first but what you want to do is have the node wrangler add-on enabled uh, if you don't have that enabled you could go to edit preferences add-ons and search for node wrangler it's right there so once we have the node wrangler enabled you press ctrl t and we have the texture node coordinate as well as a mapping node uh, we do not need to change these nodes because already we have it at UV, which will be correct for this tutorial. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to add two modifiers to this geometry in order to make it project the image correctly onto the mesh. So the first modifier we add is subdivision. Instead of the first option, we want to change it to simple. 
and we want to bump up the levels in the viewport as well as the render to five. Then the next modifier we want to add is a UV project. We want to make our UV map the only UV map that there is, and we want the object to be our camera that we imported from FSpy. So it looks a little stretched at first, but what you want to do is you want to make the aspect X and aspect Y of your original image. In order to do that, you can go to the properties of your image. In the property details of your image, it will show the, the dimensions. So you want to plug that in into Blender. The X axis was 2000 and the Y axis was 1333. And once we have that taken care of, as you can see, once we move our camera around, it's almost like magic that the image is in 3D. So this is a very powerful tool because you could take an image and make it a whole scene. And this is where it gets exciting because what you can do from there is you could take objects, put them in your scene, switch the cycles really quick. And you can see the lighting from the image affects any object that you put in there. So if I make a new texture, take the metallic, crank it up, take the roughness, bring it down, shade it smooth, you can see that the reflections are completely accurate to the image. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Now, one more thing you want to do in the shading of your image, just to have this weird tiling not be there, is instead of having it from repeat in the image options, you set it to clip. Now, that's taken care of. And one more additional thing you can do is you can add a mix to remove this black border. You want to add a mix shader. Drop that in there. Then you want to also add a transparent.bsdf there and you want to put it at the bottom shader and then you want to take the alpha of the image put in the factor and matter of fact you want to switch these yeah and and once you have it in cycles you can see that the black parts of the image aren't there anymore so whatever part of the image wasn't captured simply won't show up in the render last thing you want to do is to make sure not to use the camera that was imported with fspy in animations because if you move it it messes up the camera projection. So what you want to do is undo that and you want to go into the transform properties and lock them all off and create a new camera. And you could put this new camera wherever you like. And to set the new camera as the active camera, you go to view cameras, set active object as camera. And once that's done, you can animate the camera however you like. And here's a bonus tip that you could take this geometry and now you could deform it. So if I put a wave modifier, We'll actually stick with the ge geometry and create a really interesting effect. So if you want the floor to wiggle, you can do that. Or if you want the hallway to twist, which is what I did for one of my previous uh, videos that actually went viral, I, you could add an empty and you want to put it at the place where it's going to twist. Then you want to click the actual hallway and then you want to add the modifier simple deform. And from there, you want to check the empty off and then you want to change it to twist on the Y axis. You want to take the empty and bring it up a little bit. Yeah just like that. And as you can see, when we do the simple deform modifier, the hallway is twisting and it is stick and the image is sticking correctly to the geometry. And that's pretty much it. We're done with this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want more video editing tutorials from me, be sure to sub to me as I'm going to have way more coming. Hope you have a good one.